If there's one thing that can be said about King Arthur and his knights, it is they could never turn down the opportunity to take part in a good, hearty quest. Even when embarking on one was quite obviously not a sensible idea. A few days before Christmas, Arthur and his knights were relaxing and sharing stories together, sat around their famous round table in the main hall of Camelot. The mighty doors suddenly were flung wide open. A blast of icy air blew into the room, followed by a tall, cloaked man. The man had been sent as a messenger by the giant king of Wrexham. He was hosting a grand tournament, with the winning team to be recognised as the finest knights in all the land, as well as taking home an appropriately gigantic prize of gold. That was, of course, an outrageously tempting quest for any knight worth his salt, and so after assuring Guinevere that, yes... He would definitely be back in time for Midnight Mass on Christmas Eve. Arthur and his knights set off for Wrexham. The journey there was actually totally uneventful, as was the tournament itself. Arthur and his knights wiped the floor in every event one after another. And after a brief winner's feast, it was time to go home. With each knight now carrying a full sack of gold, the pace of the return journey was positively sluggish. And at about the halfway point, Arthur realised there was no chance they were going to make it home in time for Midnight Mass. A shortcut was needed. They stopped to rest just north of Wixall Moss, a vast area of dangerous peatland bog. Arthur knew if they could cross it directly, at least two hours on their trudge back to Camelot would be knocked off. There was nothing for it. Across the moss, they would have to go. Even for the most nimble-footed, the moss can be deadly, with hundreds of deep-sucking pools, and Arthur and his knights were laid low by their gold. It truly was a risky route. And then to make matters worse, a thick, wintry fog descended, and it wasn't long before they found themselves hopelessly lost. The men then all huddled together to argue what they should now do, when the sound of a bone-splitting roar hit them. (sighs) Then out of the gloom, a huge lion padded slowly towards them. A lion so huge, its shoulders were the same height as a shire horse. A lion with fur that glowed snow white from the tip of its long tail to the very tips of its mighty mane. Purest snow white apart from its piercing eyes, which shone a rich pink. It was a creature of the fairy world. It was a fairy lion. Immediately, Arthur and his knights fell under some sort of trance and lowered their weapons. The lion exuded an aura of calmness and grace, which wrapped itself fully around the lost companions. With a swish of its tail, the lion turned and headed south, and powerless to resist its magnetic grip, the men followed. Despite its awesome size, the lion left no paw prints on the marshy ground and seemed to almost float as it weaved its way slowly around the countless dark pools of the moss. But shining like a morning star, the men never lost sight of their guide as it led the way through the fog. A little while later, the dim shape of trees could be seen up ahead and the lion stopped. It roared one more time, then as swiftly as it had come to them, the line disappeared into the murkiness. From here, the way was simple. They were soon back on solid ground, and the road to Camelot following the river turn. It was still a close-run thing, getting back in time for midnight mass, but they made it. Guinevere, of course, demanded to know why they were so late, and the story of the spectral line came tumbling out with no details spared. But in the weeks that followed... The knights started to question if what they had seen really had been true, and the clear memory of the creature faded away, just like the lion itself had done when it returned to the fog on that fateful night. But the story of the white lion and how it saved King Arthur and his knights at the round table has never been forgotten.